Hey everyone, today I have a pretty different video for you because something happened to me. If you don't watch my vlog channel, yes, I take that very personally, I'm offended, but I will give you a small recap. I broke my elbow about a week and a half ago and it happened on a Sunday in the morning. I woke up, fainted, hit my head, cut my head. I still have like a huge bump and a scab, it's like blood all over, blood on my hair, everything. And I landed on my elbows. One of them is broken, one of them is just bruised. And it actually is looking so much better. Yay! There's one thing to be happy about. No, there are lots of things to be happy about. I'm so, so thankful that it wasn't worse, that I didn't have any kind of like internal bleeding in my head, that I didn't have both elbows broken, that it was my left elbow that broke and not my right, and I would be lost in this world if I didn't have my right hand. Luckily, I can still do lots of things, but I will say life has gotten a lot trickier in the last week. Everything takes a lot longer, but I can pretty much do most things. I've found a lot of different ways to figure things out. The hardest thing that I had to kind of relearn was putting on my contacts and taking out my contacts with one hand, mainly the left eye. I don't know why, it's just the hardest thing in the world. Anyway, I just got a text from Grant and it just said, how's your swelling? My swelling isn't great. It's not very cute. They're just like very much sisters, not twins at this point. Whatever, whatever. Watch my vlog channel if you want more information. Don't forget to subscribe while you're there if you want to. I'm trying not to drag this video out even though I'm doing it, I'm sorry. Anyway, up front, one of my first concerns, the biggest thing on my mind literally as we're driving to the emergency room is what about my hair? Like there's still so much blood in my hair. Like how am I gonna wash my hair? How am I gonna blow dry my hair? The night before I had done a Halloween costume and so I had like my 80s hair with like tons of hairspray, lots of teasing, and also the new addition, blood. Lots of blood in my hair, dried, crusty, and also really, really painful. So I was very concerned with like, how am I gonna wash my hair? Are they gonna put a cast on me immediately? Like, what about my hair? I had had a fall. I was very confused. I was kind of panicked. And so yes, not the biggest thing in the world, but a valid concern. But as I've been just kind of like feeling my way along and trying to figure out how to do my things that I want to do, I found a lot of really great helpful videos on YouTube from people in different situations where they don't have use of one of their hands. So they're really just doing like one-handed hair tutorials. All of these women, like seriously, absolute respect honor, I'm linking everything, all the videos that I watched down below that were helpful for me. Like that is just like the most giving sweet thing to like share your knowledge when you know that someone else in that situation is probably struggling with doing their hair, even if it's a temporary situation like mine or it's not temporary, like whatever. I am gesturing wildly with one of my arms. Now this one just has to double up. I am very sorry. I need to like tie behind my back. Anyway, finally getting to the point, everyone who hates me, you can just put that timestamp down below, help everyone else. It's all good. Love you so much. Today I am sharing all the tips, all the techniques that I've learned along the way, everything that's worked for me and that will hopefully work for you if you find yourself in this situation or maybe if you're just boring at parties or you don't like small talk, you can bust out a trick for all your friends and do your ponytail with one hand. I don't know your life. I'm gonna be talking about washing your hair, drying your hair, straightening your hair, doing a ponytail and curling your hair with a wand. It's a lot of things. This is kind of an ambitious video, especially for me to like set up the camera in different ways. Hopefully I won't have to do all of that. Hopefully this all goes well because I have practiced so much, but honestly, all of these things are still pretty difficult for me, but I feel like if I can do it, you can do it. And that's what I'm here for. That's what YouTube is for me. So I'm glad you're here. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed. First off, washing your hair. I was concerned about this a lot, mostly because my head was really sore. I was bleeding. I had a scab. I still have a scab. It's still really tender, but washing has not been as big a problem as I thought it was. I can't get my situation I have down here wet. So I've just been washing it in the sink. And the biggest challenge with that is getting the shampoo out. So either get some shampoo and conditioner with a pump that is easy for you to do by yourself or have someone on standby like I had Grant. I'm prepared to squirt any things you need in your hand at a moment's notice. And they can just squirt it into your little paw and you can put it in your hair like that. 
Or I also got a comment just recently saying you can get a shampoo bar from Lush. I haven't tried that, but I can imagine that would be really helpful as well. Another thing you could do is just squirt the shampoo or conditioner into different bowls and put them by the sink and you can just grab it out as you need it. It could be messy, but it also could be really, really helpful. If you don't have a bath and you really need to wash your hair in the shower, you can get one of these. <laughs> this is like the funniest thing. It almost looks like a Christmas stocking, but it's like the most plasticky smelling Christmas stocking you've ever seen in your life. It's got this little rubber seal and it's super, super tight on my arm. I feel like if you were like a muscly man, I don't even know how you would deal with this thing because it feels like it's gonna cut off your circulation, which is probably not good, but it does the job. I'll link everything down below if I can find it in case you need it. Okay, on to the next hurdle, drying your hair. So I was pretty intimidated by this situation because if I just let my hair air dry or if I just rough dry it without a brush or a round brush, it gets kind of crazy. But if you watch my last video, you'll remember I got one of these things. <laughs> this is the Dyson Air Wrap. Please do not come after me with pitchforks. If you watch that video, I did not feel like the Dyson air wrap was worth it. If you wanna watch my whole video on that, I luckily made it before I hurt my arm. Since I've had my injury, I have used this. So first I'll like rough dry my hair a little bit or let it air dry. And then I flip my head over and I go through it with the brush attachment. And yes, my hair is pretty naturally straight, but it really, really tames it and it makes it come out so straight, like almost as if I've used a straightener and I don't normally use a straightener. That's not really the look I love, but I like that it really tames it. No, I am absolutely not telling you to run out and buy this because it's way overpriced. Honestly, I'm gonna send mine back and I'm gonna go find a different blow drying brush because I know they make them, I know they're out there and I really don't think anyone should go out and buy this just for this attachment. It's just, no, I don't think it's worth it. But since I had it on hand and I haven't returned it yet, I've been using that. I feel like such a crazy hypocrite telling you that, but I mean, it's just, that's just how it all worked out. I did not plan it this way, but whatever. Okay, here's where things stop being polite and start getting real. Time for a ponytail. Ponytails can be very important, especially like if you've broken your arm, you've broken your elbow, you're in a situation where you just wanna get your hair out of your face more than anything in life and you don't know how. That could be a situation where you get so frustrated you start crying. Have you ever been there? Because I have. This is still something that you have to practice and it is kind of tricky and I've watched a bunch of different videos and I've tried it about 800 times yet still now I'm kind of nervous to show you because I'm like oh my gosh what if it doesn't work but we're doing it anyway. I like my ponytail or my bun or whatever I'm doing to be kind of high so we've got to relocate. We're going to the bedroom. You can also do this on the back of a couch. I'll explain everything along the way but the only thing that you need is this little hair tie. So I chose one like this. I found that the ones that work best for me are these really stiff thick ones. I don't even know how I had some of these in my drawer because I do not like to use these. I like to use those thick, flat, ribbony, elasticy bands. I don't know what these things are called. Or those spirally, plastic, slinky looking ones. I don't know the name of anything. But for this situation, those things didn't work and this guy did. So I guess we just have to get along for a little while. Anyway, let's go to the bedroom. I'm gonna show you how to do it. All right, here we are in the bedroom. All right, we just gotta hop up on the bed super easy like definitely do not hurt yourself during this step i will be so mad at you be careful and if you don't feel up to it don't do it hair doesn't matter step one is just to gather all of your hair into your hand and then next up you just start twisting your hair you want to twist it pretty tightly and you want the base of the twist to be where your ponytail is going to land or come from, you know what I mean. So you're twisting, twisting, and then you start to form a little bun. And then you just keep twisting, and you're gonna tuck the tail of your bun under so that it holds the bun shape by itself. Don't look at my socks. Now you get off the bed. If you need to hold your bun, hold your bun, get to a wall, and get your hair tie ready on your hand like this. It can't be too far down on your fingers or it won't pop off the way you need it to, so just keep it real loose there. So now you pop that hair tie over your bun, and then you get close to the wall, and you smash your bun into the wall, and you let the wall hold your bun for you as you twist the hair tie around the bun again.
and now you have a bun like this and it is a little bit loose you can leave it like a bun like this or you can pull it out and you can have a ponytail so is this the best ponytail you've ever seen in your life definitely not but it works for me it does take a lot of practice even just doing this right now it took me like three to five tries because sometimes it comes out too loose sometimes for me it comes out on the side but that's i think because i'm twisting it with my right hand so you really just have to play with it i've practiced a lot it's really only been a week and i feel like you could definitely master this like if i can do this you can do this and if you're just looking to get your hair out of your face you're not like going to the oscars like definitely if you're going to the oscars get your hair done by a professional i can't tell you how proud of myself i was the first time i got it down i'm in to it can you tell <laughs> okay it definitely killed me a little bit on the inside to take that ponytail down after all that work but we've got bigger fish to fry this is one thing that I really thought I was just gonna have to forego as I'm recovering but no the internet saved the day and I found out two different methods to curl my hair with a wand with just one hand. Both of them work pretty well, but I think I like this method more. I have a little contraption. Oh, I don't think you can really see it. This is one of the blow dryer stands that I found on Amazon. It connects to the counter or the desk or whatever with a suction cup. But my tip is the more pressure you put on the suction cup as you're connecting it, the better it will stay. This has been here for like at least 24 hours. I didn't want to move it because I knew I was shooting this. So yes, I originally ordered this contraption to hold a blow dryer because I thought that was gonna be my thing, but no, it's not what I've been doing every day. It's probably too much work for that. But if you're like me and you just need to figure it out, this is the way to go. Obviously, first you wanna make sure your hair is really nice and brushed out so it doesn't give you any trouble. And now you want to separate your hair into sections or at least separate off one section to work on to start with. And I'm just gonna kind of twist it. You'll get very good at twisting your hair up just to get it out of the way. I'll make a little hair ball. All right, I'm just gonna clip that. Oh, I just broke my clip. <laughs> This hand's getting real strong. So you wanna position the wand in a way that it's gonna be easiest for you to get around it. So I have my small section and then I get in front of it and I start twisting upwards. This is definitely the opposite way that I would normally twist my hair around a wand, but it totally works and it doesn't bother me. It creates a little bit more of like a messier shape but I'm happy with it. It works for me. I think more than anything, the most annoying part is just getting the sections separated off from the other parts of the hair because you don't have the benefit of using your other hand to get the other hair out of the way. And there you go. You've got some nice, pretty mermaid waves. All right, so like I said, there is one other way you can use a wand in your hair that I found that really definitely works. It's a little bit trickier and it requires a little coordination, but it doesn't require you to have a tripod or any of these kind of holders or anything like that. So I'm gonna try to show you. <laughs> I keep trying to use my other hand. Even a week later, I'm just not used to it. I don't like this technique as much, but it does work. So you wanna section off your hair, grab that section. You guys are probably so scared. I'm like wielding this thing around, but trust me, I practice. Okay, and you want to grasp the end of the section with your thumb against the wand, and then you wrap the hair around the wand like so. It's definitely not gonna come out like the cleanest, most perfect wave. I've done my whole head like this, and it was pretty messy. I liked it, I was happy with it, but I definitely like the other technique better. So, it comes out with a more twisty mermaid wave and you definitely have a straighter end. Just in case you didn't catch that, I'm gonna do one more section to show you. I had to pick it up with the section of hair in my hand. You can also hold it with your pointer finger if you need to, but you just wanna get right at the end and then start to wrap. Hold it for a little bit, and then you can start to feed the hair up and move it down the barrel. And this one didn't work as well, 
but it did work. And you definitely come out with a messier look, a more beachy mermaid wave with straighter ends. If you like this look, this is the technique for you, but it takes a little bit too much coordination for me. So I'm gonna switch back to the holder and do the rest of my head. It can be done. It might be frustrating. It might take a little bit longer, but you can do it. I'm here to cheer you on. <laughs> All right, I'm done curling my whole head. These are my results. And I have not figured out how to tease my hair with only one hand. I don't think that's a thing. But for now, I just use my Orbe dry texturizing spray. It costs way too much, but it works. So I let it steal all my money, whatever. This doesn't do all that teasing does for me. You might not even be interested in volume, but I feel like I need it, especially with the blow drying situation. And I just add it in a couple of sections of my hair. You can also use dry shampoo if you have that on hand. I try not to spray it directly on my scab. It's probably not good for it. I don't know, not a doctor. I also add some in the back, but I'm not doing that right now because I don't think I like it. So obviously pretty messy, pretty wild, pretty mermaid, but that's okay. And I like to brush it out. You can leave it as is if you want. This is how I do it. All right, so there you have it. These are the one-handed waves. All right, my last hair trick is actually something that hasn't quite worked for me so far, but I'm gonna try it one more time because I never give up. And it is a shoelace bun. So I've got a shoelace here, or this might be like a drawstring from like a hoodie or something, but just use whatever you've got. First step is to drape it across your hairline like so. Put it behind your ears. Pull your hair back like this. And now you take the ends of the shoestring and you cross them behind your neck. And now you bring those strings forward and pull it tight. So it's gonna get tight across your forehead. And then you go up over your ears with the ends. This is, looks kind of strange, but it's really cool. And now you keep it pulled really tight and you start pulling it tighter and tighter and pushing the shoelace back and pulling it up at the same time. This one is a little bit painful for me because I still have that bruise on my head, but you just want to keep it pulled really tight and push it back. And there we go. Now here I have a ponytail. You can turn this into a bun by wrapping the string around the hair and drawing the hair up. But I think this is cute as just like an alternative ponytail method. So this is where it gets kind of tricky because <laughs> you have to wrap it around. And now to secure it, I'm just going to tuck the ends into the ponytail. Yet again, my issue of it kind of coming out as a side ponytail, it kind of happened again. This one is a lot trickier for me. The original video that I saw, she was making a bun up on the top of her head. My hair is totally not the same texture, so it would be a lot harder for me to create that look. But this is an alternative method to do a ponytail and it works. So that's everything I have to share. That's everything I learned. I really hope this video was helpful for you guys. If you are recovering from an injury or you just found yourself in a one-handed situation where you've got to do your hair, I get you, it's a struggle. I'm struggling right along with you and I just wanted to help in any way I could because it's intimidating. Going through this situation is a huge challenge and obviously not just doing your hair and makeup and things like that, like everything is a challenge. You've gotta figure everything out and it's hard. So I wanted to be here for you in the best way I knew how and also stop worrying about your hair. <laughs> I feel like I have to say that, like obviously you need to rest, recover, heal, Stop thinking about your hair. I'm mostly just talking to myself at this point. Don't mind me. Anyway, if you've watched this video and you are not in this situation, thank you. I appreciate you. I like you. Maybe you're really bored. I get it. I've lived that life. 
it's okay. But I appreciate you watching. You should probably subscribe. If you've already subscribed, thank you so much. You are my people and I love you. And you can find me on social media everywhere. It's Leanne Says and I love talking to you guys over there. I hope I was helpful. Anyway, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Bye everyone. Very cute, very nice. <laughs> you can't really see my hair. You kind of know what it's doing, right? No, this isn't good. That was a lot of hair things. Slam it down. I'm sorry. All right, so here's where the rubber hits the road, meets the road. What do they say? Clearly, I've never used this saying before. <laughs>